in the beginning of 2000, many people in Spain felt that there was a lack of representation and something new was born, something really new and interesting. So I'm, I'm welcoming Laura Roth to talk about it more. Hello. Hi, everyone. Um, thanks a lot. Uh, thanks to the organizers for having me today. Thanks for the introduction. Um, thanks, everyone, for, for making time for this and, and for being here today. Um, so, um, today um, I will share some, some thoughts and some experiences uh, about um, my experience in the municipalist movement in Barcelona, but in Spain. Uh, but also I've been working on municipalism as, as a researcher for some time. And uh, so my, my thoughts and my experiences, so the practice and the theory are always uh, uh, yeah, overlapping and uh, influencing each other. So I hope that you can keep that in mind um, throughout the conversation. Um, so we'll, I, I wanted to start by saying some obvious things that you can probably relate to and, um, and explain how this is connected to uh, the experience of a new or radical municipalism. Uh, because of, so I will refer to municipalism in that way, new or radical municipalism, to show that it's something that is, of course it has a long history, uh, but it's something that tries to be a bit more specific and a bit more so radical in the sense of going to the roots of the problem. Right, um, um, and um, these obvious um, thoughts that I, that I wanted to share. Um, so, first of all, uh, it has become a common place to talk about the rise of cities and um, the declining role of states, which are not able to address our most urgent global problems at the um, uh, in, in current times they are also not able to meet people, uh, people's most immediate needs and concerns. Uh, they are said to be too immersed in the capitalist order and in the capitalist framework and not able to actually offer alternatives to the, to the system that we live in. Um, and one of the m m things that is also most important for me is that they are not, uh, and also from the point of view of what I'm going to share today, is that they can't really uh, become democratic in a, in a strong way, in a strong sense. Uh, they cannot really rely on um, um, uh, a very thin uh, version of democracy and what democracy could be like. And this takes us to the issue of representative democracy, uh, which is a central issue uh, for municipalist um, for the municipalist movement. So um, in recent years, uh, this is also obvious, we have seen a shift uh, towards more uh, technocracy, political disaffection, apathy. Uh, and so although people connect with the idea of democracy, they don't connect with the representative institutions that they have and that they see, and also many other institutions that conform, um, yeah, what, what we call the state. Um, and the only, uh, of course, the, the only link or the main link they have to those institutions is the vote. Um, and this doesn't seem to be enough. Uh, the World Values uh, Study, uh, uh, survey, sorry, um, the World Values Survey shows that in, in, in all, every country in the world, people have that feeling of being connected to democracy, but not to the, to the institutions that we nowadays, um, uh, that that we that that conform the representative democracy that that we have, um, and then um, so the I was I mentioned technocracy, disaffection, and apathy, and also there is um, a certain level of criticism of traditional political parties and the way they work and how they are not able to to respond to those uh, democratic aspirations that that people have. Uh, political parties are usually um, criticized because of the hierarchies, the level of centralization, the level of professional, professionalization, 
and and um, often uh, also too focused on their own survival, uh, which is uh, uh, because it, it's hard uh, for most political pol political parties to keep up the level of um, of uh, activities that they usually have. So they they need to find uh, in the innovative strategies to cope with this these situations. Um, and we also, of course, you know, we've seen the rise of populism, a uh, really scary rise of the right-wing um, um, populist phenomenon, but also in the left, uh, you, of course, you, you know uh, several references, uh, th several cases. Um, and the interesting thing is, uh, and that uh, thing is that this is why I'm picking up on populism, is that populism um, actually connects with uh, at least part of, 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 of um, some of people's uh, desires, which is this need for more democracy, the references to the people, and the aspiration to actually have a role in politics again, so versus uh, the elite and technocracy, right? Uh, so as, as Chantal Mouffe uh, nicely describes in, in her book um, uh, for left populism, um, Although we can criticize the extreme right for doing this, we need to pay attention to what it is responding to. Uh, so what, what is it that people actually want that the extreme right is giving an answer to? And that is really, um, really um, a priority in the, it should be a, really a priority in the leftist agenda. Although the response doesn't need to be the same. Uh, and it doesn't need to be a left populism either. Yeah. In my, in my view. Uh, so I, although I agree with her with the diagnosis uh, of the situation, the response doesn't need to be the same. Um, so um, the problem is both, um, with both, sorry, um, is that although the renovated discourse around democracy and the ordinary people has the ability to mobilize to a certain extent, they are not able to um, achieve real change and actu to, to actually democratize politics. So, you know, populism is paying lip service to this idea of democracy, but in practice is not able to actually listen to the real voices of people. Uh, they work from the top down, centralized leadership, etc., etc. And they are not able to connect with the grassroots movements or with ordinary people. Um, and this is much worse for the left. Uh, so a left populism um, has, has um, uh, bigger problems with this strategy because the aspirations of the leftist voters are a bit more demanding than just uh, having someone um, saying things in the name of the people. Usually leftist voters expect something more real to happen. Um, I'm just exaggerating, of course, uh, but um, uh, I, I guess you have to see the point. So, y of course, you know all of this. I'm not saying anything new, but um, I wanted to connect what I'm going to say to that specific context. So, um, my uh, concrete experience, so a few years ago I was doing my PhD in Barcelona. I actually came from Argentina, I was born there. Um, and um, after finishing my PhD, uh, I got out of the library to the world and I wanted to uh, reconnect with my activism and the, the local elections were about to happen in Barcelona. This was for uh, 2014, the end of 2014, beginning of 2015. Um, so I, would, I went to my na local neighborhood assembly uh, from Barcelona and Comú. Um, and this was the time when Barcelona and Comú was winning the local elections. You remember in 2015, uh, probably, uh, you probably remember that in many cities in Spain, including the biggest cities, local citizen platforms won the elections and started governing the cities. So activists went from uh, being in there, uh, and, and ordinary people went from doing their thing uh, in social movements to uh, suddenly being in charge of a city council. And in most cases, this happened through a confluence of actors, including many social movements, but and, and also um, some political parties, um, small political parties, yeah. but th this confluence wasn't organized through a, 
um, a quota system. So and it wasn't. Um, um, uh, sorry, I'm missing the word. Um, anyway, an organic integration, uh, let's say, uh, but people would participate as individuals there. Everyone knew who came from where, but people would participate as individuals um, in, this, in this confluence. So the assembly was totally open, so no one um, asked me anything when I, when I went there, but they were also very open in the sense of uh, being uh, a, 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 um, a friendly place for newcomers, uh, especially for someone who uh, wasn't integrated in the local ne uh, activist networks, who came from another country, who uh, still have di had difficulties uh, speaking uh, the local language fluently, so um, Catalan in this case. So um, no one would ag ask anyone for their activist or, or militant CV uh, in this, in this um, Experience and that I found that really interesting, really comforting, and many people were joining these assemblies all the time. So um, I think this this was the first. Um, this is probably the first uh, lesson that I that I take from this movement that they, they were really open and really um, uh, able to to make anyone participate and incentivize anyone to participate. Um, and then. In, in Spain, it's usually, so the work that we usually use to refer to the phenomenon is, phenomenon is um, uh, desborde, overflow. So the elections in 2015 in most places were an, an, uh, an experience of, of overflow. So no one was really in charge of the, what was happening. It wasn't a centralized campaign in the same way as that we are used to. Uh, people were organizing uh, more or less spontaneous things, and I will say more about this in a minute, uh, in a more um, uh, yeah coherent way. But uh, uh, it was uh, there was a, a, a level of excitement and of, of um, freedom. Uh, that you could do anything uh, to support this campaign, and that was really interesting as well. So um, this is, is one of the the things that I, I also felt during this um, time. Uh, after the elections were won, uh, I, um, I well, I, I did different things in the in at Barcelona and Comú, but for one of my main um, uh, activities was to support the international committee, and we were um, dedicating a lot of time on free and resources to build an international network of um, municipalist uh, organizations. These were as uh, so. In the case of Barcelona and Comú, but also every other municipalist organizations, they didn't coincide with any existing pre-existing political parties. So the, the the network had to be created um, anew, and the and the and this shows that the, the focus was not merely a local focus, but but an international and a global focus. And um, and also the aim was to exchange uh, and to build some kind of um, collective movement um, beyond the local level. And finally, another thing that I have been focusing on is what what um, many refer to as the feminization of politics. Um, and uh, in the municipalist movement, but also in, in probably in Spain and, and in other places, it has become quite common to talk about not only um, what we do in politics, but also how we do politics and how this is related to a feminist agenda, the feminist um, uh, explosion in recent years, and to what extent organizations are actually uh, open to uh, this, this uh, huge feminist revolution that we are seeing in many places. Um, and this is both for um, principle reasons, uh, so it, it is a better way of doing politics, but also for strategic reasons. So it, it is really hard for leftist um, political organizations nowadays to ignore the feminist revolution that is underway uh, because they, they are otherwise they are seen as part of the old regime, right? So it's, a, it's also a strategic um, uh, aim of these uh, organizations. So, in this context um, that I was mentioning um, at the beginning, uh, municipalism um, 
And grow, going back to the crisis of uh, the state and the rise of cities I, I mentioned, um, in Spain, as I was mentioning, but also in other countries, municipalism or radical municipalism is appearing as, a, as a, an alternative strategy. Uh, and I will mention now um, from in, in, in a more, in a relatively idealized uh, way, um, some of the um, elements of, of this uh, municipal strategy and why it is uh, working in some places. So, um, first of all, in contrast to the traditional framework of uh, politics, whatever that means, um, uh, the municipalist movement is challenging both the state and also traditional ways of organizing through tra political parties. Um, and they look to the city and the neighborhood and the town. It's not uh, exclusively an urban uh, phenomenon and their, their own peculiarities. So in each territory, uh, what are the resources, what are the, um, the capacities in order to build specific tailored practices uh, and strategies that can work um, according to the local circumstances, as I, sa as I said. Um, the second element is that uh, at the face of the problem of political fragmentation, which is something that we suffer uh, in many countries in the leftist um, uh, area uh, or space, um, broad political platforms are created, as, as I mentioned before, uh, in the case of Barcelona and Comú. These platforms or confluences, like we call them in Spain, they bring together a diversity of actors social movements, local groups, small political parties, um, individual citizens, etc. in order to very broadly describe changing politics from the local level. Um, and, um, and the work of these platforms is organized around shared aims instead of shared structures. Um, and, um, sorry, I'm losing my... Uh, but allowing for diverse strategies and diverse forms of organizing. So, uh, you, um, organizing behind uh, shared aims, but also giving freedom to, um, to find different paths to uh, collaborate towards those aims. Um, as I said, this is called desborde uh, in, in, uh, in Spain or overflow, and it means that no one is actually in charge, but many actors are collaborating in spite of the tensions that, are, that exist between them toward a shared goal, or with, at least within a shared framework. Um, and not, this doesn't mean necessarily against a shared enemy, which is also a very uh, masculine uh, uh, ways of, way of, of describing uh, the strategy. Um, then a third element is that instead of, instead of following a populist um, way of uh, organizing um, and of understanding politics, these platforms are usually strongly focused on strong local democracy. Um, the aim is to pursue, of course, a leftist agenda, for instance, uh, the agenda of the social movements in the city, but through the creation of local citizen assemblies, and or the reform of local institutions in order to make them more responsive to citizens. This means, for instance, legal transformations based on the commons uh, or implementation of participatory democracy mechanisms that go beyond mere um, typical participatory budgeting, etc. Um, so instead of, of simply paying lip service to democracy, it seeks to actually create, create spaces to uh, have uh, people giving, um, uh, sharing their views about politics. And this is also, again, uh, strategically uh, important because it's a way of uh, um, actually creating a, a, re a resilient um, movement and, uh, and, um, and getting the support of people, re-engaging people with politics, etc. Um, then another element, and also in contrast to populism, uh, they focus on the mobilization at the local level around concrete issues um, and the daily life of people, 
uh, linking those issues to, to the root causes, so not simplifying reality or anything, but not to abstract enemies or theories or frameworks. So these courses are focus, uh, focused on the palpable, the practical, the lived experience of people and how this is related to bigger problems. But the discourses are not uh, simplified or generalized or made abstract to the uh, extent that people can't connect with them anymore. Um, so this is a, a really strong contrast with the populist strategy. Um, and in close relation to this, and this is another element, uh, and also in contrast to patriarchal ways of doing politics, which relies on hierarchies, professionalization, and also burnout, um, to, or to make things work, they organize around or, or try to organize around, around feminist values. This means that these organizations try to focus not only on what needs to be achieved, so the aims, but also on how to achieve this, how power is built um, through cooperation uh, instead of confrontation. Um, this means no external or internal enemies in the political organization, no unsolvable, unsolvable uh, conflicts, but taking conflict as an opportunity to, uh, to grow and, um, and things like this. They also focus on internal democracy in political organizations to uh, dismantle the different privileges that usually exist within organizations um, and also within uh, state institutions and local, lo the local state. Um, they focus on care, um, which has become uh, also uh, really um, a commonplace probably nowadays in, in political discourses, but, uh, but in, in practice this means at least three things and there's many ways of implementing this, but care for dependent beings, so recognizing and, and, and really paying attention that some people have other people who depend on them. Um, the second way of paying attention to care is care uh, between uh, activists and militants. So to what extent are organi political organizations a nice place to be in, a friendly space for everyone where everyone feels happy to participate and not excluded and so on. Uh, and the third element of care is self-care, so to what extent do political organizations but also the local institutions uh, incentivize self-care? Uh, we usually tend to do the opposite, right? We, we expect a lot of people, we don't give them tools to take care of themselves. So um, we've um, analyzed this, these issues in a, in a report that was published a few years ago, ago called um, Feminized Politics Now. It was published in several languages by the Rosa Luxemburg Stiftung in, the, um, in Brussels. And, um, and there we, we went through some of these discussions, but also um, many of the, of the practical ways of implementing this. Uh, so really concrete tools that are really easy to implement in organizations to make them more feminist in this sense. Um, then another element uh, of radical municipalism is that against local parochialism and um, you know the, the t one of the typical criticisms when you talk about municipalism that it will end up being a not uh, a not in my, my backyard strategy so people will just uh, focus on their uh, uh, selfish concerns and so on. Um, in against that, or, or in contrast to that, um, municipalism is focused on translocal cooperation, uh, and um, the aim is not, nevertheless, the, the aim is not to use the local uh, level to build a, a national political party um, and to win the national government, but actually to work as a political ecosystem. Uh, organized as some kind of network of or confederation of local units, which can have different forms in different places. And this is the long-term uh, goal. So the utopia they have in mind is a political system uh, where cities and towns actually govern large territories through innovative decision-making structures. So it is offering one possible uh, way of implementing 
this idea of cities and towns becoming the main actors in politics, which is something that we usually agree with, but then in practice we still, uh, when we talk about many issues, we still focus on the state. So it is a way of trying to imagine new ways of shifting away from the centrality of states. Um, in those cases where these platforms uh, win elections and run the local government, um, there's an another element um, in place. Um, they face, uh, of course, lack of competences and resources, like in many places. But instead of focusing on those um, limitations, they try to be creative and um, uh, and, and shift to, to shift away from traditional means of overcoming the, that that lack of competence or uh, lack of resources, uh, or just complaining about them, uh, which is <laughs> also. Uh, usually the case. Uh, this doesn't mean that it's not a real problem and that they shouldn't fight for more competence and, and resources, but in, in practice, it's, I think it's interest to s interesting to see how they go beyond uh, simply seeing this as a fixed limitation and, and trying to uh, go beyond that. So, first of all, they've been using networks of cities to exercise pressure on national governments um, instead of going into the fight alone, uh, which is um, sometimes um, yeah, uh, a, a, a natural tendency to say, okay, so I have this problem, I need to ask the central government about this. And they, instead of doing that, they, they try to use the networks uh, for that, first to build the networks and then, and then to use those networks. Um, they also turn to social innovation and legal innovation instead of simply complaining about the legal limitations. So they focus on uh, like finding the, the, um, the, the spaces where the law is either absent or where social organizations are creating new ways of avoiding the limits that the law is imposing to, uh, to give answers to specific problems in the city or in the town. They also learn from other municipalist governments and from social movements. So th learning from other governments is, of course, something very common. There's many networks of cities that uh, incentivize that, but also from social movements. So uh, they seek to, to uh, they establish close connections with social movements in the city and learn from their ways, from their agendas and their ways of doing things to address some um, some problems uh, in the city that they can't address through their legal competences. They also use their limited resources in collaboration with social movements to build local alternatives instead of waiting for the state to change the law. Um, they put a lot of effort on changing the agenda uh, uh, of the media, of the national government, of other political forces, uh, instead of merely focusing on implementing policies. So sometimes, if, if, uh, even if an issue is, um, is, um, would lead to a dead end, putting that issue on the agenda has become one of the central aims of these movements. And, and you, can see that you can say that this is too uh, superficial or, or, or um, not ambitious enough, but in Spain you can actually see how the political agenda has totally shifted from 2015 until now. There's some issues that were completely irrelevant before and are a, a very top priority right now, like housing, for instance. It has become a really important, uh, thank you, a really important, um, issue and many other issues. Um, so, it, yeah, so it, it has its relevance. Um, then another uh, element um, in this, um, so in, in this framework of lack of competence is that they focus on the long term instead of simply on immediate wins, which is of course difficult, um, both because uh, you need want to get things done, but you also want people to see that you get things done, etc. But um, focusing on you know, on long-term strategies has helped these movements feel less um, less uh, disappointed about their own capacity to do things. And finally, they see change in the way politics is done uh, as something as important as the concrete policies that are implemented. Is, and this is also part of the long-term goal. Uh, so they see changes in. Um, 
uh, in internal working, the internal working of organization, but it also the internal working of the city council, and uh, the discourses, many things related to the way of doing politics as an as a, um, as a, um, oh, sorry as a, um, yeah something that you t the word in English is missing so something that you today and will bear, bring fruits tomorrow uh, so. Um, they, they don't see it as a loss, uh, but an, as an investment, sorry, yes, that was the word. Um, so, in a nutshell, uh, radical municipalism is in practice changing things that people thought or, or still think that are given and that cannot be changed. So, um, uh, or, or at least, um, Yeah, so, um, so it, 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 of course, there's many examples of how this is happening in practice and, and more concrete um, uh, explanations of, of how this works. But, and, and of course, there's many limitations to what the movement is doing and, and, and can actually do. Uh, but it is actually happening. So it's not something that uh, someone is making up uh, and, uh, and in, in, uh, uh, just an idealized version of, of politics. So um, I also wanted to mention that one of the interesting uh, things uh, about radical municipalism is that it doesn't really look for hegemony in the traditional sense or, tra or autonomy in the traditional sense. So in order to understand what the movement is trying to do, this is really important. So, because these are usually the traditional frameworks that we use to understand uh, what political strategies um, are for. Um, what's interesting about new municipalism is that it's trying to navigate uh, that space between um, these two extremes. Uh, that space between, on the one hand, grassroots organizing and horizontalism, and on the other hand, institutional structures and mainstream discourses. Um, it does not aim at staying pure or and immune to real politics, like many radical movements do, but it wants to avoid falling into business as usual as well. So it recognizes that trying the res same recipes again and again will only produce the same dishes and changing the way we do politics in order to make it more democratic is necessary, it's necessary because, uh, both because it would lead to happier and more, more egalitarian societies, so it would produce better outputs, but also because otherwise the left will continue its path towards decay, which is something that should worry us uh, a lot, not only in our local um, context, but also uh, more generally at the European and, and at the uh, global level. Um, th that said, there, there's many versions of radical uh, or new municipalism. Between the creation of local instances of self-government and mutual aid um, and that have the aim of prefiguring a new society, uh, to the use of local branches of national political parties to implement radical a radically democratic agenda. Um, so somewhere in between, we can also find um, what uh, Murray Bookchin called uh, communalism, for instance, uh, which is uh, having, um, well, I will explain that in a second. Um, and what also what, uh, thanks to the Spanish uh, experiences, is called, uh, as I said before, confluences. So there's many uh, options, and it's a matter of degree, and, 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 and they are very different from each other. So it's, there's no uh, one path here. Um, and I will just mention a few just, uh, just uh, as examples. So in communalism, the, the, the Murray Be uh, Bookchin version of communalism, that is actually a strategy that is followed in some places. Um, local citizen assemblies are created in order to challenge the legitimacy of the local government, and sometimes these assemblies run candidates to the um, local elections with the only aim of subjecting them to the imperative mandate of the assembly. Um, this is probably the most radical version, uh, and then in the confluence model, a broad range of actors jo uh, joins forces, as I mentioned also, in, this is what happened in the case of Spain, in order to run candidates for the local elections. The confluence is bound by a code of ethics in a participatorily drafted manifesto 
that will be implemented by the elected officials. So these are some of the concrete strategies. Um, and the agenda of these confluences um, usually include the democratization of the local state as well as the substantive polit policies that are uh, included in the manifesto by citizens. So, uh, of course, when I talk about radical municipalism, I often, he often hear two kinds of criticisms. Um, and it's interesting to observe that they are exactly the opposite to each other. Uh, so you can't make both of them simultaneously uh, without being incoherent. Uh, so the first one is that municipalism is naive and it, the plan is too ambitious. So that can't, this can't be done. Um, and to that, so there's many things you can say about that. that. But I would respond that uh, again, there is no unique pathway um, and uh, this framework can be adapted to different contexts and resources. So this is actually what uh, people are doing in different places in different ways and it, there's no one, uh, one uh, guideline or anything. The point, the main point of, of radical municipalism is to share political power in order to empower ourselves. So if I had to uh, say one thing today is that uh, and it's also a feminist way of doing politics. We need to share the power in order to build more power together. Uh, and not simply to win an election or implement a few policies. It is a long-term project uh, and there's, there's a lot um, uh, depending on, that, on the fact that we achieve uh, this in practice. The other criticism is that municipalism, even if it works, so even if you win local elections uh, and you govern all the cities in your countries, it won't actually change anything. Uh, so this is the opposite uh, criticism. Um, this criticism says that it will always uh, be marginal because state politics and the national governments uh, are the main price to win. And to that I will respond that first, radical municipalism is not a local project. As I said, uh, the aim is becoming a translocal uh, and inter uh, movement and, and it has an international framework. Uh, in, 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 um, yeah, the movement has an international framework in mind. And second, that the traditional strategy of seizing the state might not be adequate for most leftist political organizations because of the lack of capacity to actually achieve win the, the national state. So um, we could see it in, in the short term, uh, and, but we could see it also see it in the long term, as I was mentioning before. Um, of course, new municipalism has many limitations, uh, and in practice, municipalist organizations make decisions that deviate them from this balanced middle path uh, all the time. So the, the middle path that I mentioned between uh, traditional ways of doing and institutions and, and um, uh, radical uh, social movements. So it's difficult to, to, to stay, uh, to keep a balance all the time. Uh, it is a matter of balance. So um, this is the, the biggest weakness probably, but also it's, its main strength. Um, and... Um, it is a matter of being aware of which are the trade-offs uh, that need to be made. Um, and these trade-offs are always present in politics. Uh, as um, I don't know if you know this book by Rodrigo Nunes. It's a really interesting book called uh, Neither Vertical Nor Horizontal, where he analyzes, uh, I strongly recommend it, it's, uh, he analyzes what organizing means, but also uh, the problems of organizing and how to um, um, create a balanced uh, way of, of uh, organizing. It's a new book. Um, um, so if we leave too much to spontaneity, for instance, uh, our coherence and uh, effectiveness will be um, uh, will suffer. If we structure too much, our mobilization capacity uh, will suffer, and we disconnect from uh, ordinary people. So. Uh, and this is th these kinds of trade-offs are impossible to avoid. <laughs> they are there, and this is uh, this is political reality. So we uh, be becoming aware that there are balances to be found is, I think, the main the main um, uh, yeah the main aim uh, or the main um, 
the first necessity uh, of any political project. Um, and uh, this, with this I will finish. So regardless of the specifics of uh, what this particular movement is doing, um, I believe many elements in this way of doing politics uh, can be useful for the left in many countries uh, in different contexts uh, to rethink uh, itself and to become stronger. Um, and I say this because uh, I am convinced that uh, the right is not going to take care of refugees, uh, the marginalized, or more generally, the planet. So we need uh, to find ways of achieving that. Thank you very much. Laura, thank you very much. Now I'm welcoming uh, Vedran Horvat. He is the head of the Institute for Political Ecology, and then Elita Fasuli. She is member of Fridays for Future Movement. To reflect, I mean, your thoughts on what uh, Laura said, and maybe your questions to her, Vedran. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you for invitation and. Uh, it's great to be here again with uh, Bill family, but also with uh, 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 Laura, who helped uh, a lot uh, in the years of uh, formative years of establishing uh, uh, a political project in Croatia that was also heavily, uh, largely inspired by uh, municipal success in Barcelona. Uh, I would like to maybe uh, elaborate more from our context and uh, then maybe develop a bit of a discussion in uh, a couple of directions. Uh, I think that, uh, of course, uh, uh, the Barcelona case was uh, in many ways inspiring for uh, building up uh, and uh, establishing uh, uh, some uh, main ideas uh, uh, in the context of uh, Zagreb uh, and uh, I would also of course like here to relate to very co concrete experience so that we don't operate in an abstract context uh, but that we can compare experiences between uh, uh, different, uh, way different ways of political organization and mobilizations. Uh, in this sense uh, I would say that uh, Generally, I see that the change uh, toward which municipalist projects are uh, driven, the social change and uh, what uh, green or green left uh, political projects are aimed to are quite similar. But uh, where I see some differences is in the terms of uh, how, how we uh, do it or how, how they do it and uh, departure points. Uh, uh, around values are to a large extent the same. I would say that uh, it is always about uh, uh, care, sustainability, deeper democracy, uh, uh, and uh, I think that municipalist project uh, has gained a momentum uh, with being uh, uh, maybe in the terms of, of course, Bookchin not so new, but it was a new momentum that was gained through uh, through the uh, mobilizations uh, in Spain and uh, lately maybe in uh, other countries to uh, to politically be engaged beyond more rigid political party structures. Uh, so I think that we, we can use this dichotomy old and new, but of course we have to go beyond it. Uh, because in many ways, and particularly in some countries, particularly in the, in the Balkans, the lack of trust into political parties is very low. Uh, and uh, But on the other side, the citizens are willing to be politically engaged, they are willing to mobilize, but not often uh, political parties present uh, this, uh, become attractable or... Uh, so uh, the ways to how to overcome this and uh, engage uh, in politics it has to find its own other ways. In the terms of Zagreb, I think that municipalist ideas have been very, as I said, inspirational, but things did evolve in different directions in a way that it was a uh, first stage, 
that actually led later to establishing of the national po uh, platform uh, where uh, which was uh, which is presented as a green left platform uh, and there is, but there is of course uh, and we don't have time to elaborate here more broadly there is a still a sort of uh, hybridity between the locally rooted uh, municipalist platform that is uh, having power in Zagreb uh, as a position, not more as opposition, and national uh, green left political platform that is following more uh, what Laura uh, has, uh, has presented as, let's say, hegemonic aspirations. And that is, of course, uh, a rather big challenge to confront also internally in the movement uh, as, as they are these forces who, are, who intend to uh, bring hegemony as it is part of the rule of the game in the, in the, local po in the national politics. Uh, so uh, we, our experience says that uh, we, uh, we did uh, somehow rely on uh, municipalist uh, ideas, but we also uh, in, uh, heavily uh, try to somehow uh, play between municipalist projects and the more mainstream uh, party-based uh, green political project. Uh, uh, maybe just to go more concretely, I would say that uh, in our case, uh, uh, and I, I, to some extent, I would like to explore uh, both convergences and differences. Uh, with case of Barcelona, uh, we did uh, likewise start with uh, uh, antagonism, with antagonization in, in public uh, space, with repolitization of public space, and being very confrontational in the terms of. Uh, almost a decade uh, of struggles against different sorts of privatization and commodification of public space and public resources. Uh, and uh, to, uh, to a large extent that was uh, formative for the, uh, for the uh, political project uh, to, uh, uh, subject, to become a political subject in, in Zagreb. Uh, or in later in some other cities. Uh, in, in the second stage, uh, which became, uh, which was followed by the establishing of the municipal platform, Zagreb and Nash, uh, it was uh, mainly inspired by the uh, cases of cities like Barcelona, but also uh, Naples or uh, Madrid or Grenoble who is, for example, governed by a green mayor, also through the party, not as a municipalist project, but also likewise very programmatically, very close. And this shift from confrontational to oppositional uh, engagement was also followed with a, with a learning curve that we also uh, heavily uh, investigated and explored similar experiences uh, in uh, Europe-wide, where where cases of Spanish, French, and Italian, and I'm referring here also to this Mediterranean aspect, which is quite relevant to explore uh, the similarities uh, at the Mediterranean level of the of the political mobilizations. And thirdly, coming to to position with uh, Zagreb having now. Uh, municipalist platform in power. In, uh, it is the main challenge is now how to deliver this transformative agenda uh, when you are in a very, let's say, hostile context and w uh, where you uh, are sort of caught in the triangle between uh, state, uh, which is uh, in Croatian case, it's a conservative, right-wing, uh, corrupted state. Uh, on the other side, you have well-organized modern mafia around a uh, waste issue. And you have citizens who are becoming less and less patient and less and less satisfied with the speed, uh, with the rhythm of delivering transformative promises and solutions. 
and I think that uh, uh, in this, in, in our case, uh, it is uh, quite the challenging to, uh, uh, let's say, reconnect with the movements uh, who were, uh, who are, or who were supposed to be the basis of uh, of the political success, but now uh, there is a sort of disconnection between the. Uh, municipalist project in the power and the movements who have been completely absorbed uh, by the political project and because it uh, relies on all potential all possible skills and competences you can find in movements so uh, and i would of course like to hear from laura what are the experiences now with a long trajectory uh, of almost i don't know seven years uh, how this has been resolved throughout the time, to which extent uh, movements have been uh, in cooperation or at least in at some sort of relationship with the with the party slash Barcelona Comun in power. So uh, for us, it is the main challenge is first how to regenerate the movements once the there is a political success and the all. Uh, uh, resources are, or most of the resources are absorbed uh, to fill the city administration and how actually to also uh, how movements can remain autonomous or how actually movements can still be political subject on the same political line but give, uh, you know, uh, being a sort of pressure or source of pressure or source of demand to keep up uh, with the transformative agenda which is which might be often heavily compromised or at least negotiated in the political context of uh, negotiations in the political space uh, yeah for okay. now this is it uh, I can maybe we can develop discussion I think, I think let's have first uh, Elita's point of view because she's representing a movement so it's very interesting to see how a young member of a movement sees what we discussed and their role in it. Ευχαριστώ πάρα πολύ. Ήταν πάρα πολύ ωραία όλα αυτά που που άκουσα. Ήταν τρομερό πολύ πολύ πληροφορία. Ε, η αλήθεια είναι ότι συνδυάζοντα αυτά που άκουσα, καταλαβαίνω όλε αυτέ τι ε, παθογένειε που αντιμετωπίζουμε εμεί στην ελληνική κοινωνία μεταξύ τη σύνδεση ε, κινημάτων και πολιτικών ομάδων και οργανώσεων. Η αλήθεια είναι ότι φαντάζομαι δεν είναι μόνο ελληνικό φαινόμενο, ότι υπάρχουν ε, τα παράπονα, μόνο παράπονα, δίχω πράξει. Δεν υπάρχει μια σύνδεση ε, μεταξύ αυτών των δύο. Ε, και μετά βλέπουμε μία εντελώς απολυτή στάση των, των πολιτών. Οι πολίτες ε, ζητούν αλλαγές χωρίς όμως να πιέζουν και να διεκδικούν για αυτές τις αλλαγές. Περιμένουν και οι ίδιοι οι αλλαγές αυτές να έρθουν από πάνω προς τα κάτω ε, και όχι από κάτω προς τα πάνω γιατί δεν αντιλαμβάνονται οι ίδιοι ότι μπορούν να είναι μοχλός πίεσης και δεν αντιλαμβάνονται ότι μπορούν να, να πάρουν μέρος και οι ίδιοι σε αυτή την αλλαγή που θέλουν να δουν στην, στην κοινωνία. Και εδώ μπορώ να πω ότι ίσως είναι και μια αποτυχία και των πολιτικών οργανώσεων που είναι κοντά στους πολίτες, αλλά και μια αποτυχία των κινημάτων που δεν ε, δίνουν στους πολίτες ε, ε, το συνέστημα και τη συνειδητοποίηση ότι μπορούν να φέρουν την αλλαγή, ότι μπορούν να κάνουν κάτι. Αυτό ίσως είναι μια αποτυχία που πρέπει να το δούμε και από τις δύο πλευρές και να κάνουμε κάτι για να το αλλάξουμε. Ε, το θέμα είναι ότι βλέπουμε όμως και από την πλευρά των κομμάτων ότι υπάρχει μία απουσία προσαρμοστικότητας στις νέες απαιτήσεις που έχουν οι πολίτες, τόσο όσο και στο, ως προς το φεμινιστικό κίνημα αλλά και ως προς το περιβαλλοντικό κίνημα, ε, αλλά υπάρχει και απουσία ε, ως προς το να ακούσουν τους ίδιους τους επιστήμονες όσο αφορά το περιβαλλοντικό κομμάτι. Οι επιστήμονες θέτουν το τι πρέπει να, να γίνει, λένε τι πρέπει να ακολουθηθεί και προφανώς οι πολιτικοί δεν ακολουθούν αυτά που οφείλουν να κάνουν. Αλλά και οι πολίτες δεν είναι εκεί πέρα για να διεκδικήσουν όλα αυτά που, που πρέπει να γίνουν. Οπότε υπάρχει και μια απουσία σύνδεση της επιστημονικής κοινότητα με τους πολίτες για να διεκδικήσουν με έναν επιστημονικό τρόπο τα πράγματα που πρέπει να, να γίνουν. Ε, προφανώς υπάρχει και μια απουσία συμπεριληπτικότητας μέσα στο, 
στους πολιτικούς και κομματικούς κόλπους, που πλέον αυτό είναι κάτι πάρα πολύ αρνητικό και οθεί τον κόσμο στο, προς την απουσία, προς το να μην κάνει κάτι. Ε, το θέμα είναι ότι ο κόσμος αντιλαμβάνεται ότι πρέπει να υπάρξει μία, μία αλλαγή. Ε, βγήκε μία, πριν από λίγο καιρό μία καινούρια έρευνα από το Υπουργείο Πολιτικής Προστασίας και Κλιματικής Κρίσης εδώ στην, στην Ελλάδα, ε, όπου οι περισσότεροι πολίτες απάντησαν ότι αντιλαμβάνονται ότι πρέπει να υπάρξει μία αλλαγή, αλλά ότι την μεγαλύτερη ευθύνη φέρει η Ευρωπαϊκή Ένωση και ε, η κυβέρνηση. Οι αλλαγές, δηλαδή, θα έρθουν από εκεί. Εδώ, βέβαια, έρχεται το, το παράδειγμα εδώ πέρα που, επί της ουσίας, οι μεγαλύτερες αλλαγές διεκδικούμε να γίνουν πρώτα από το Δήμο και μετά προ, προς τα πάνω. Οι πολίτες, ε, πολύ λίγοι πολίτες απάντησαν ότι οι αλλαγοί μπορούν να έρθουν από τις τοπικές κοινωνίες και από τους ε, Δήμους. Και αυτό πρέπει να το πάρουμε και να το επεξεργαστούμε για το πώς μπορούμε να δώσουμε στους πολίτες να καταλάβουν ότι όντως οι, οι αλλαγές πρώτα απ' όλα θα γίνουν μέσα από το Δήμο μας και στη συνέχεια προς τα πάνω. Ε, βλέπουμε όμως ότι, ε, ο, ο, ότι, δεν, δεν, ο, ότι αυτό ότι είναι αποκομμένα επί τους ουσίας, οι άνθρωποι, οι, οι πολίτες από τους ε, Δήμους. Και βλέπουμε ότι υπάρχει αυτή... Αυτή η αποκοπή, αυτή η απομάκρυση, γιατί δεν αντιλαμβάνονται και πώς οι ίδιοι μπορούν να παρέμβουν στον ίδιο τον, το Δήμο τους. Ε, οι πολίτες, όσο ένα ποσοστό μπορούν να συμμετέχουν, να παρακολουθούν έστω τα Δημοτικά Συμβούλια, αλλά δεν αντιλαμβάνονται ότι μπορούν να το κάνουν ή ότι είναι σημαντικό να, να το κάνουν και να βρίσκονται εκεί πέρα, αλλά και ως προς το, την ελεκτική διαδικασία, αλλά και ως προς την ε, συμμετοχική ε, διαδικασία. Ε, θα πιάσω κάτι από αυτό που αναφέρθηκε, ότι οι πολίτες θέλουν να γίνονται όλα ε, πάρα πολύ γρήγορα, ε, θέλουν να γίνουν όλα πάρα πολύ άμεσα και πάρα πολύ εύκολα. Υπα, ε, υπάρχει μια απουσία συνειδητοποίησης ότι οι αλλαγές θέλουν ε, πάρα πολύ μεγάλο χρόνο ε, και πάρα πολύ μεγάλη προσπάθεια. Το βλέπουμε ε, και στο εσωτερικό των κινημάτων πάρα πολύ, αλλά και ως κινήματα που ερχόμαστε σε επαφή πάρα πολύ με τον κόσμο, ε, ο κόσμος έχει μια πάρα πολύ μεγάλη απογοήτηση γιατί οι αλλαγές δεν γίνονται έτσι όπως θέλουν οι ίδιοι να γίνουν ή στον χρόνο που θέλουν να γίνουν. Ε, και όντω τα κινήματα είναι η βάση της, ε, της πολιτικής, αλλά βλέπουμε ότι υπάρχει μία αποσύνδεση αυτών των δύο, γιατί πρώτα απ' όλα το, το ίδιο το κίνημα έχει αποσυνδεθεί από το πολιτικό κομμάτι, γιατί υπάρχει μία απεσιοδοξία και... Μια απογοήτευση, ίσως, απέναντι στα, στα πολιτικά κόμματα ε, και γιατί υπάρχει μία έλλειψη εμπιστοσύνης. Και κυρίως την έλλειψη εμπιστοσύνης δεν ξέρω αν παρατηρείτε στις άλλες χώρες και αυτό θα ήταν ένα καλό σχόλιο να γίνει. Αλλά εδώ πέρα στην, ε, στην Ελλάδα υπάρχει μία έλλειψη εμπιστοσύνης των κινημάτων απέναντι στα, στα πολιτικά κόμματα. Παλαιότερα, πριν κάποια χρόνια, Πολιτικά κόμματα ήρθαν κοντά στα, στα κινήματα, ε, επί τους ουσίες βγήκαν στη συνέχεια στην εξουσία και ήρθε μια πολύ μεγάλη απογοήτευση. Οπότε, ε, ένα πολύ μεγάλο ερώτημα είναι το πώς θα μπορέσουμε εμείς μέσα στα κινήματα ε, εσωτερικά και εξωτερικά να, να αφήσουμε λίγο πίσω αυτή την, την έλλειψη εμπιστοσύνη, να υπάρξει μια επανασύνδεση με τα κινήματα, αλλά με, με τα πολιτικά σχήματα, αλλά με νέους όρους, ε, με νέες συνθήκες. Ε, και αυτό έχουμε ένα πολύ μεγάλο ερωτηματικό το πώς μπορεί να γίνει. Ε, γιατί ακόμα εδώ στην Ελλάδα υπάρχει το, το, ο κεντρικός χαρακτήρας ε, που αναφέρθηκε. Εμείς θέλουμε να ξεφύγουμε από τον κεντρικό χαρακτήρα, αλλά υπάρχει ένα πολύ μεγάλο ζήτημα ως προς το πώς μπορεί να, να γίνει αυτό. Ε, οπότε, εμένα το ερώτημά μου είναι πώς τα κινήματα μπορούν να λειτουργήσουν αρμονικά ε, μαζί με τα πολιτικά σχήματα, ούτω ώστε να, να ρολάρουν ή τέλος πάντων να είναι οι δυο τροχοί, οι τέσσερις τροχοί ε, στο, στο ίδιο όχημα. Πώς μπορούμε να, να πάμε μαζί και να διεκδικήσουμε μαζί με τα πολιτικά σχήματα μία πολύ διαφορετική οργάνωση της... Ε, Τη τοπική κοινωνία πρώτα απ' όλα. Γιατί θέλουμε να είναι από κάτω προ τα πάνω, αλλά πρέπει και, αυτή, πρέπει και τα ίδια τα πολιτικά σχήματα να είναι έτοιμα να δεχτούν ε, και αυτά που ζητούν τα, τα κινήματα. Και βλέπουμε ότι δεν είναι τόσο ε, κοντά σε αυτό. Ε, 
Επίσης, θέλουμε να υπάρχει μία συνέπεια μεταξύ των όσων λέμε και όσων κάνουμε και βλέπουμε ότι ενώ τα κινήματα θεωρητικά ή τέλος πάντων προσπαθούν πραγματικά πολύ να είναι συνεπείς απέναντι σε αυτά που, που λένε και σε αυτά που εφαρμόζουν, ε, τα πολιτικά σχήματα βλέπουμε ότι ε, κάνουν ακριβώς το αντίθετο. Οπότε τα κινήματα πρέπει να ξεπεράσουν και αυτό το εμπόδιο που έχουν να αντιμετωπίσουν. Και δεν ξενιώθω τώρα ότι έχω βάλει πολλά αρνητικά πράγματα στη, στη κουβέντα, αλλά αυτή είναι η αλήθεια. Αντιμετωπίζουμε πολύ μεγάλα ζητήματα και εσωκινηματικά και έξω από τα, τα κινήματα. Ε, αλλά η αλήθεια είναι ότι σίγουρα πιστεύουμε ότι μπορεί να έρθει η αλλαγή. Αυτό είναι το μόνο σίγουρο, αλλιώς δεν θα ήμασταν στα, στα κινήματα. Οι μεγαλύτερες αλλαγέ έχουν έρθει από την πίεση και την δραστηριοποίηση των κινημάτων είτε από πολίτες που ανήκουν σε κινήματα, είτε όλοι, όλοι μαζί. Αλλά το σημαντικό είναι να καταλάβουμε ότι όταν υπάρχει πίεση θα υπάρξουν και οι αλλαγές. Ακόμη κι αν εξεκολουθούμε να είμαστε σε ένα μοντέλο που οι αλλαγές έρχονται από πάνω προς τα κάτω, επί της ουσίας, δηλαδή οι αποφάσεις παίρνονται από την Ευρωπαϊκή Ένωση και από ε, τις κυβερνήσεις, για να έρθουν αυτές οι αλλαγές, το πόσο μεγάλες αλλαγές θα, θα είναι ή πόσο ε, ριζοσπαστικές θα είναι οι αποφάσεις που θα πάρουν, έχουν να κάνουν με εμάς, με τους ίδιους τους πολίτες, με το πώς οι πολίτες διεκδικούν και βρίσκονται μπροστά. Αν οι πολίτες δεν διεκδικούν και η Ευρωπαϊκή Ένωση και οι κυβερνήσεις δεν πρόκειται να πάρουν αποφάσεις που δεν είναι υπέρ αυτών που θέλουν να είναι. Ε, οπότε, αυτό εγώ κρατάω και τονώνω πάρα πολύ, το ότι πρέπει να είμαστε εδώ ε, παρούσες και παρόντες και να η πορεία πλέον δεν είναι ο μοναδικός τρόπος για να διεκδικήσουμε και ίσως πρέπει να επαναπροσδιορίσουμε και τα εργαλεία που χρησιμοποιούμε. Ε, πλέον ναι, η πορεία ήταν ένα πάρα πολύ σημαντικό ε, κομμάτι, ε, τρόπος διεκδίκησης. Πλέον βλέπουμε ότι δεν είναι αρκετός, δεν αρκεί. Όλοι λένε, α, μία ακόμη πορεία στην πόλη. Ε, και μάλλον φέρνει περισσότερη δυσφορία στο, στον κόσμο, παρά, ε, παρά ένα αίσθημα το ότι ναι, θα κατέβω και εγώ και θα διεκδικήσω. Οπότε, ένα στοίχημα και των ε, κινημάτων και των Ινστιτούτων και των φορέων που πρέπει να είναι μαζί και να συνεργάζονται, είναι να βρουν νέους τρόπους διεκδίκησης, ε, πιο καλλιτεχνικούς θα πω, πιο ακτιβιστικούς. Laura, I think both questions are around the balance you just mentioned between the political movements and how you can be also in the somehow traditional political system. Could you give us a concrete answer so I can also give then the floor to the, the people we have here to ask you questions? Sure, thanks. Yeah, thanks a lot for the, for the comments and questions. I, I think um, so this this is the main question that uh, that the municipalist movement is asking, uh, both in Spain but also in many other places where people are trying out these strategies. By the way, I haven't mentioned this, but this this is not a Spanish thing. So there's municipalist platforms following different kinds of similar strategies in many places throughout the world. Um, so. Yeah, th this is the key. This is a key problem, and it's connected to this this point that I was making earlier of finding a balance between uh, the movement strategy and the party strategy. Right, finding a balance to a cer certain degree means that um, both sides needs need to rethink their. Uh, ways of doing things, right? And and you, both of you, sort of brought up this point um, already. So uh, uh, you were mentioning, for instance, uh, that citizens ask for a change, but they expect it to come from the top down. Uh, I would say th this is this is true, but instead of asking simply why aren't they, aren't they participating, if they have the spaces to participate, I'm not saying this is your point, but, but, but this is a very common point, like why do they, we open, I don't know, meetings, council meetings or in the movements, we, we invite people to uh, public demonstrations and they don't show up. Um, instead of, of, um, of complaining about these kinds of issues, we should probably rethink like how we are um, 
not able to to mobilize them and not to not because people should be treated as infants who should be guided uh, but um, life is uh, dynamic uh, circumstances change people behave in different ways in different moments they have different interests uh, they also have very busy lives um, so um, uh, we should we should be asking all the time what what's the problems with the channels that we have what is it that we could do better to uh, be more attractive to citizens and I think the answer to that can only come from a, some kind of version of sharing power so if inviting people uh, in in any way so in, in that can be mean different things. For, but if inviting people to join or to participate in, in anything merely means that we want to have them there and to agree with what we already know, that won't work. I mean, that is not sharing power. Sharing power means having open questions and finding answers together and leading through framing problems in a way that can mobilize instead of leading through offering solutions that we already know are, are the right solutions, which is a risky uh, enterprise. Of course, if you ask broad questions, you, you can receive the answers that you don't want to receive. But still, there's a lot that can be done in how you design those spaces of participation. We know a lot nowadays about how different forms of deliberation, of fa facilitation, of like, we know a lot about how about the risks of participation and how this can be used in our so so uh, the tools that we can use in our favor to produce more informed. Um, answers that people can own because that's the that's the I mean it might be very obvious but still I mean we don't usually do that in practice we we go to people with a with a um, great idea and we expect them to uh, say okay this is cool uh, and I think this is a problem everywhere in the political scene I mean and, I, and when I say political I mean uh, the institutions and the parties but also the movements like politics in a very broad sense we we are used to working that way uh, and it because this is how it has been done for centuries I mean and um, uh, and, and, and I think that this there's a nice risk to um, assume in, in um, sharing decision-making power with people. Because uh, actually, in, 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 in spite of the uncertainty uh, of uh, democracy, so uh, uncertainty, so in, in, sp in spite of the fear that uncertainty can generate, uncertainty is part of democracy. So we can't have democracy without uncertainty of what the outcome will be. Uh, otherwise, it's not called democracy, right? Uh, so, um, I think that's, I mean, it's a very general observation, but it, it's, a, it's a way of approaching the problem that I think is very useful uh, in, in, in practice. Um, and, uh, uh, and of course, mm, you could still say, okay, but uh, in order for people to um, participate in politics in any area, both in movements and in political parties, in, in institutional uh, uh, processes, they need to have a certain political education that they don't usually have, they're not used to participating, they are used to complain, they're used to expect others to solve their problems, that's, th that's true everywhere uh, in different uh, degrees, but it, that is true everywhere. Uh, but participating uh, is the school to uh, have people um, to, to, to for, for citizens. I mean, there's no other school for citizens, uh, for politics. Um, so so um, we can, um, again, we know a lot nowadays of how to um, uh, include people, how to mobilize people, and how to um, have decision-making mechanisms that are both able to sort of educating, educate people and at the same time produce um, informed and um, 
uh, outcomes. So, so that's yeah. I guess that's my main point. Then, in relation to to the synergy between party and movement, um, yeah, I would summarize my response. I mean, in, in practice, what the strategy should be is, of course, a local issue because the circumstances are very different. Depends on the level of polarization, depends on the level of fragmentation, depends on the history of the movements and the parties, it depends on many things, of course. But I think I would say two things. So from the side of political parties, it means sharing power to a certain extent. Uh, and from the side of the movements, it's, it means um, moving away from simply protest and, um, and uh, demand to, to building uh, and to cooperating. Uh, also with other movements. So one of the main elements in the municipalist strategy is that many different movements in di working on different topics get together and they decide to either organize a citizen assembly or to run for elections or whatever, uh, depending on the case. But they, they go together because they see that one of the root causes of their lack of impact is the lack of democracy of the local state and the central state. So, and, and that's why they decide to collaborate uh, with political parties and to perhaps run for elections together. Um, Thank you, Laura. Yeah, Thank okay, I wanted to say something, <laughs> but it's, it, it's already a lot. Um, sorry, Vedran, I, I have missed one of your main points, but I'm um, sorry. No, just Thanks. in order to have uh, more time to give the floor to you people, is there any question that you would like to ask any of our three speakers about all these interesting things and the way democracy can go hand in hand? Yes, thank you very much. I have a question for each of them. Because Laura, the Barcelona in common was... The question is... Γιατί είναι, είναι, αν είναι κάτι το οποίο μπορεί να ενδιαφέρει και άλλους εκτός Βαρκελόνης. Ah, sorry. Yeah. Right. Το ερώτημά μου είναι αν το κίνημα αυτό, το Μπαρτσελόνα εν κομμού, ήταν συμπτωματικό ή μπορεί να μεταφερθεί αλλού. Γιατί έχουμε μια πολύ συγκεκριμένη εποχή όταν εμφανίζεται, το 2015, μια πολύ συγκεκριμένη πόλη, τη Βαρκελόνη, και μια ιδιαίτερη συγκυρία, την πάταξη του αυτονομιστικού κινήματος κτλ. Και από το 2015 βλέπουμε το κίνημα να είναι πρώτο το 2015, δεύτερο το 2019 και θα είναι μάλλον τρίτο το 2023. Οπότε θέλω να μου προσδιορίσει περισσότερο τι είναι, α, α, ε, ε, αν πραγματικά αυτό το πράγμα είναι μεταφέρσιμο η εμπειρία, αυτή είναι μεταφέρσιμη, είναι κάτι πολύ ειδικό. Για τον Βεντράν, θα ήθελα να μας αναφέρει λίγο περισσότερο την τη προβληματική του οικολογικού κινήματος που ήταν εναντίον στην πράσινη αριστερά. Είχε η, 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 λίστα, η πράσινη λίστα, νομίζω, τον... Τι αναφέρομαι. Τι ε, ελίτα... Ελίτα μου που αναφέρεις ως... Ε, αδυναμία των κινημάτων και τα λοιπά και δυσπιστία απέναντι στα κόμματα, φοβάμαι ότι είναι, το βο... είναι περισσότερο, λιγότερο θυμός η αμφισβήτηση και περισσότερο βόλεμα. Βόλεμα. Δηλαδή νομίζω ότι στην πραγματικότητα και τα κινήματα στην Ελλάδα είναι πάρα πολύ καλά ενταγμένες πελατειακές σχέσεις, τις παραδοσιακά κόμματα, οι αντιλήψεις είναι πολύ λιγότερο ζωσπαστικές από ό,τι λένε και στην πραγματικότητα φοβούνται να κάνουν το άλμα προς την πολιτική, γιατί έχουν πολλά, περισσότερα να χάσουν παρά να κερδίσουν. Ευχαριστούμε. Ναι, no, Should I go first? Let's go, yes. And then, Petra, um, and then Elita. So, uh, of course, the Barcelona and Comú experience as such cannot be transferred anywhere else. That doesn't mean that uh, movements uh, or citizen platforms cannot learn from each other. Uh, they have been learning in the last uh, almost decade. Uh, and there is a, there's a lot of exchange between platforms in, in many places. And, and uh, as I mentioned, uh, minutes ago, there are municipalist um, experiences in different countries, uh, and they are very different from each other. There's the, if you want, if 
if you're interested, you can check the fearlesscities.com uh, website, for instance. There's a map there with uh, some um, experiences in different in different places. It's very out outdated, but still you can see there's it's not something about Barcelona itself. And also there's um, there's a European Municipalist Network. Uh, who created another map of organizations. So you can see many references and some of them might be more, more look more than mm, yeah, what your local context look li looks like, but some of them might be um, a bit more different. Uh, so no, it cannot be transferred, of course, but there's, but still there's things that, um, ways of doing and, and things that can, so as a, as, a, as a whole it cannot be transferred because it's very specific, but many, many specific things I think can be transferred. It doesn't mean that the strategy needs to be the same either. I mean, it doesn't need to be a, the municipal strategy doesn't need to be building a confluence and running for elections. Maybe you don't have movements in the city, like uh, it happens in many places. I don't think it's the case here, uh, or in many places in Greece, uh, the problems are different, but um, yeah, I don't, yeah, uh, they don't, can't be transferred. And I would add to that, to that, that we shouldn't idealize the Barcelona in Comú experience either. It has been, uh, permanent, um, there has been an evolution in the Barcelona and Comú experience. It has become something very much like a political party as we know. Uh, it has become part of a Catalan party and it supports a national, a, a, a state level uh, political party, a political coalition. So it's um, um, the, the relationship with the movements has been uh, more of synergy at the beginning and much more of tension right now, which is also productive because, and this takes me to your previous question, so, so in Barcelona there has been an intense uh, movement, movement side that has still been challenged, has still um, been challenging both the city council and Barcelona and Comú as a, as a political organization. So. Um, uh, yeah, it has changed. So also you could also ask, like, what is to be transferred, right? What what it was at the beginning, or what it was uh, in the second elections, or what it is right now. So um, I think there's there's specific things that can be learned, and uh, and there's a lot of space for exchange, but nothing, nothing. There's no thing to transfer actually. Thank you. Uh, yes, answer to a question on, I suppose you referred to green list. Uh, thank you for the question. It also broadens the discussion to issue where uh, far right uh, or other populist movements tend to grasp green issues to become uh, political subjects. Uh, in, the, in this case, uh, uh, the case of, I don't want to talk too much about this specific case. Uh, there was a, a attempt to uh, polit to establish ad hoc uh, political party that would call be called Green List to grasp to get some uh, green votes or votes of the uh, of the citizens who are maybe less knowledgeable about uh, political offer, uh, and they have been uh, uh, in coalition with the party of the previous mayor who have uh, been responsible for the uh, main corruption affairs, mismanagement of public resources, and all, all, all this uh, uh, thing that have been constantly taking place for 20 years and that uh, Green Left uh, platform opposed to. So I think that uh, it is, uh, it is uh, important to, to, of course, differentiate where green issues or green labels are trying to be misused or usurpated in order to get some votes. Uh, in case of uh, such parties, uh, you can easily track uh, uh, to which extent they are, uh, let's say, original, homegrown, to which extent they have a basis, to which extent they are a product of the continuity, or uh, do they have a coherence. It's relatively not too difficult to differentiate uh, 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 the, uh, the, the, let's say, the DNA of a certain political project. Uh, and uh, in, in these terms, I recall uh, the times when uh, there were almost 10 
there were nine or ten political green parties in Croatia 15 years ago, and they were all competing against each other to to uh, to say, to say who is more green or who is greener. Uh, and for, fortunately, we are these times are behind us and. Uh, the one and main difference is that the green left political platform has been growing slowly but surely for more than 10 years and it became present as a new political subject. It's not like a pop-up party, pop party that is appearing just uh, a year before elections to grasp some green votes. Thank you. Thank you, Vedran. Ε, για να απαντήσω κι εγώ, ε, η αλήθεια είναι ότι δεν θα πω ότι υπάρχει περισσότερο βόλεμα εσω, εσωτερικά. Μπορεί να φαίνονται ότι υπάρχουν κάποιε συνδέσει, αλλά επί ουσία εσωτερικά υπάρχει πολύ μεγάλη ρήξη του κινήματο με, με τα πολιτικά κόμματα που ίσω συνδέονται κάποια από αυτά. Ε, εγώ θα πω ότι υπάρχει πολύ μεγάλη, ή τέλο πάντων προσπαθούμε να υπάρχει πολύ μεγάλη συνέπεια μεταξύ των όσων λέμε και όσων κάνουμε. Ήταν κάτι που, που ανέφερα. Και τα κινήματα προσπαθούν να, να είναι βαθιά δημοκρατικά μέσα του, ε, με όλε τι προκλήσει που αυτό φέρνει. Πολλά από αυτά μάλιστα έχουν και πολύ έντονη οριζόντια δομή, με ό,τι αυτό επίσης ε, συνεπάγεται και όλες τις δυσκολίες που, που συνεπάγεται. Ε, θα πω ότι υπάρχει εν τέλει ε, απουσία, ε, υπάρχει απεσιοδοξία και απουσία δράσης και επί πρέπει να μετατρέψουμε αυτή την απεσιοδοξία στο να πάρουν ευθύνε και, και πρωτοβουλίε. Γιατί δεν φοβούνται το άλμα, φοβούνται το να πάρουν ευθύνε και πρωτοβουλίε και να έρθουν οι ίδιοι να κάνουν την αλλαγή. Και αν ισχύει αυτό που λέτε, εγώ προσκαλώ τον κάθε ένα που νιώθει ότι ισχύει αυτό το πράγμα να έρθει και να αλλάξει εσωτερικά τα, τα πράγματα. Να γίνει ο ίδιο η, η πίεση και εσωτερικά για την, για την αλλαγή. Πραγματικά νομίζω ότι το, το ζητάμε και τα, τα ίδια τα κινήματα όταν υπάρχουν οι εσωτερικέ αλλαγέ. Και νομίζω ότι είμαστε πολύ ανοιχτοί στο να έρθει κόσμο και να κάνει τις αλλαγές. Και αν δεν είναι τόσο εύκολα, να διεκδικήσει πολύ βαθιά και ουσιαστικά αυτό το πράγμα. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you all the three of you. Thank you for all the wonderful points. And now the time is again for you because we have, after each panel, we have a question again on the Metimeter. And now we can see the, the question on the screen, please, in order for the people to vote. Uh, are your local authorities ready to manage broader competencies? So that's the one million dollar question. I think I want to answer to this as well. Mm, yeah, that's a tough one. No, they don't have the resources, is gaining ground very quickly. <laughs> I think this is an issue we, we need to discuss to our coffee break. All right, I, th I think we have the winner. <laughs> they don't have the, the, the resources necessary to handle these issues. Mm, let's discuss this, but also we can definitely uh, meet very interesting speakers right there who will talk about media coverage and refugee issues and uh, stereotypes regarding gender. So let's have our coffee and more interesting discussions out there. Thank you very much. <laughs>